With everything going on in the world, we're living in a society where the rich and the financially educated keep becoming richer while the middle class is getting wiped out because the middle class is becoming poor and now this new poor and the old poor are just becoming poorer. If you really want to understand why the middle class is getting wiped out and why poor people and the people who are not financially educated are going to continue to become poorer, we got to take a step back and really understand what causes poorness and poverty to begin with? Now, I know that's a super deep question and we have systemic issues and we have political issues and we have geographic issues. But if we just focus in on the financial side of things, I want to read you this tweet by a professor from the OSU Entrepreneurship School who says, what causes poverty? Nothing. It is the original state, the default and starting point. The real question is, what causes prosperity? That's an interesting take on things. And it's essentially saying that we're all born flat zero with nothing. We're all born poor. But how come some people become wealthy while other people don't? Nobody is born a millionaire as in creating millions of dollars of value. Sure, maybe you have rich parents who give you a trust fund and as soon as you're born, you're worth millions of dollars because your parents are rich, but nobody comes out of the womb producing millions of dollars worth of value. So if you jump a little bit deeper into that question of what creates wealth, there are five things that create wealth. If we stick with the assumption that everybody is born flat with nothing, how do you become wealthy? Well, the first way someone can become wealthy is if you win the genetic lottery, meaning you have rich parents. And so, yeah, you're born with nothing, but then mom and dad can transfer a million dollars into your account and boom, you're a millionaire, even though you haven't created any value. So, you know, this is a portion of people. It's not everybody, but some people do become wealthy just because they were born into a rich family. There's no control over which family you're born into. You can't decide who your parents are. We don't get to decide what our parents did or what our grandparents did, but this is just the reality. Some people win the genetic lottery and because of that, they're wealthy. The second thing is just luck. Some people win the lottery. Some people go to the gas station, they pay $2 for a Powerball ticket and they win $24 million. Some people are lucky in that sense and they become wealthy because of it. And there's a lot of different kind of layers of luck because even beyond just winning the lottery, if you live in a first world country and you can speak and understand what I'm saying and you have access to the internet, you have access to running water, you have access to shelter, you don't got to worry about bombs flying over your head, that's also another form of luck. And so there's a whole bunch of different layers of luck, but people can become wealthy just because of luck if you go out and you go to the casino or if you go out and win the lottery and these things could put millions of dollars in your lap. Now again, is that likely? No, but it is possible and some people become wealthy because of luck. Third is hard work. This one works most effectively when you couple it with number five financial education, but some people are going to work two or three jobs and they're going to bust their butt and they're not going to spend any money and they're going to work really hard to make as much money as possible. That way they can become wealthy and they're going to take all of the extra money that they have and invest it. That's why some people can work minimum wage jobs and retire very wealthy while other people retire broke because some people are willing to put in a crazy sacrifice for decades in their lives while they are living off of very little and they're investing every penny that they can because they want to become wealthy and they're busting their butt, not getting any sleep, working very hard to become wealthy. Now, again, if you have the right financial education, it becomes much easier, but some people do become wealthy just because of the efforts that they put in. It is very hard to become wealthy just because of your labor and your efforts, but some people do do that. The fourth way and probably the most common way that people become wealthy is again, a combination of four and five, but it goes into education. Now I'm speaking more of the kind of like your traditional education where now you go and become a doctor, you go and become an attorney, an accountant, you earn this really high salary. And if you have the right financial education, then now you're going to use this high salary as a tool where now you have a lot of money that you can invest and save. That way you can become wealthy. And that's why a lot of people say that education is the route out of poverty. But if you don't have education with financial education, then education can just put you into a deep spiral of debt because now you go out and become a doctor and you have $200,000 with the student loans. And as soon as you start making this doctor salary, if you start enjoying this doctor lifestyle with the nice cars and the nice vacations and the nice clothing, then you could be broke for the rest of your life. So again, this is why number five is really important with number four, just like it's important with number three. And if you want to keep your money here and here, you got to have financial education as well. But you can become wealthy if you have good education because that can help you make a better salary. And if you have a better salary and you know how to do with your money, then you can become wealthy. You don't need a doctor's salary to become wealthy. If you're working hard at your job and you have financial education, you can become wealthy. You just got to understand number five, which is the fifth way that you can become wealthy, which is really a part of three and four. 
but it's using your money as a tool instead of just spending all of the money you get. Because the whole idea of financial education is understanding how to use your money instead of just making money and then wondering where all your money went. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't matter if you're born a millionaire. It doesn't matter if you win a million dollars. It doesn't matter if you make a lot of money because you work a lot of jobs. And it doesn't matter if you're a doctor. If you don't have the right financial education, it doesn't matter. You're not gonna be able to keep your wealth because you don't know what to do with the money you make. So at the core, it doesn't really matter how much money you make. If you have financial education, you can become wealthy. If you don't have financial education, you never have a shot at becoming, or I guess keeping your wealth, because you can win the genetic lottery and you can win the lottery without producing a lot of value to make money, but you're not gonna keep that money unless you got the financial education. Now, if we go back to the original assumption, that everybody's born at zero and starts at zero, that doesn't mean that everybody has to put in the same amount of effort or has the same effort required to get to wealth because everyone's gonna have a different path. People are gonna have access to different resources. People are gonna have access to different connections. People are gonna have different parents. People are gonna have access to different things, which makes the path to wealth a little bit easier. I guess this kinda goes into the luck part over here. Like for my grandparents, becoming wealthy was irrelevant because for them, their goal was just to be able to survive because they were refugees. When our home state of Punjab, which is in India, was severed during the Indian partition, they had to literally run for their lives. And so my grandfather had a sword and that's what he used to protect himself during this migration. And he saw his own family members get killed right in front of him. So for him, there was no inclination or really stress or work to become wealthy. It was just being able to survive because he lost everything. He lost his family, he lost his home, he lost his land. And so he had to start all over again. And so for them, it wasn't this path to wealth, it was this path to survival. When my parents immigrated to America, they didn't know the language, they didn't know the culture, they didn't know the people, and my dad said he had less than $100 when he came to America, but he had to make it work. And so now, you're working off of hard work and education just so you can survive. So assuming that everyone starts at zero, these are the things that can build your wealth. You can be born with rich parents, you can be born lucky, maybe you're born in a first world country, you can speak English, you have access to technology, that's lucky. Even if you don't win the lottery, it's lucky if you live in a first world country and you have access to running water and you don't got to worry about bombs flying over your head, that's lucky. Now your path to wealth is a little bit easier than somebody who's living in a third world country that can't speak English, that doesn't have access to the internet, that's worried about a bomb flying over their head. So you got a little bit of element of luck there too. Your hard work, your education, your financial education. These are the things that can help you become wealthy and the things that kind of destroy wealth are now especially lack of financial education. This is one of the most prominent things that you see happen in first world countries because now you have so much money and you have so much access to credit and everybody has all these nice things. So what do you do? Well, you use tomorrow's income to finance today's lifestyle with debt. And now you're living paycheck to paycheck because you're financing everything. You have a brand new car that you financed. You have new AirPods. You have Lululemon leggings. You have $20,000 with the credit card debt. You have $60,000 with the student loans just because you think this is normal because everybody else keeps spending money and has all these nice things. So you think you should do it too and you don't understand the real cost of this and you don't understand how you can use your money the right way. Now, of course, even in first world countries, there are other things that can destroy your opportunity to become wealthy, like having a poor mindset. If you don't have a good mindset, you have just destroyed all chance that you had to become wealthy unless you win here or here. But if you don't have a good mindset, I mean, that is the foundation to become wealthy. That's why we are the minority mindset, because it's about the mindset of thinking differently than the majority of people, which is why if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, you should do that. But the reason why this is so important to understand now than ever before is because we're in a society where the rich and the financially educated are becoming richer while the middle class is getting wiped out and the poor is becoming poorer thanks to two things. The first is cheap debt. And when I say cheap debt, I mean first that it is very cheap for you to go out and borrow money. So if you wanna go out and buy a home or if you wanna go out and put more money on your credit card, it is very cheap to do that. And the second part of cheap debt is that it is very easy for you to go out and qualify for more debt. This cheap and easy access to debt makes a lack of financial education so much more painful now because we're seeing a whole new generation of people that are just racking up debt, using their debt, this cheap debt, to buy things that are not paying them because it is now so easy to go into debt. Back in the day, the worst kind of debt was credit card debt because with credit card debt, you would have to go to the store and you could swipe your card and you didn't realize how much money you were spending. So if you were bad with your money and you didn't know how to spend your money, having a credit card was kind of like adding fuel to the fire because now anytime you shopped, now you were more likely to spend more money than you had. Now we're seeing this problem become a whole lot worse because you can just shop online. 
And so instead of having to drive to the store to spend money off your credit card, you have one click push to buy. And so you can rack up this credit card debt without even realizing it. And it is so much more easy to go into credit card debt. But even worse than that, we have a whole new kind of online programs to help people buy now and pay later. Or as I like to call it, broke now, broke later, because you have all these programs like Affirm and Afterpay, which allow you to shop online at your favorite e-commerce stores. And when you go to the checkout page, they say, hey, instead of paying this $100 right now, do you want to pay it off in installments? And so we have this kind of whole new generation of people that are entering this whole new world of buy now, pay later, because we have never really experienced the real cost and effects of this yet. Like with credit cards, we know that credit cards are expensive. We know that credit cards can be dangerous if we don't know how to use them. But if you know how to use credit cards, they can be a great tool. Now with these buy now and pay later programs, it is very easy for people to get access to money that's not theirs to buy things that they don't need and to buy things that are not paying them. Wealthy people and the financially educated don't do that. They're not going into debt to finance their vacation to Cancun. They're using debt, if at all, they're using debt to buy assets which make them money. Because now you're using the bank's money, which is cheap, and you're using this bank's money to make you more money. The majority of people, when they're going into debt, they're using this money to buy things that make them look rich. Vacations, clothes, cars. These things make you look rich, but they keep you broke. Wealthy people and rich people, if they use debt, they're using it as a tool to buy assets which are cash flowing, which are making them money, while the majority of people are not. And so you have this whole kind of group of people, this majority of people that are going deeper and deeper into debt to buy things that are making the broker, while the financially educated are using this cheap debt to make them richer. And so this is the first thing why you're seeing this bigger divide between the rich and the poor, because there is such easy access to debt. And so rich people are using this easy access to debt to become richer, and the poor and the financially educated are using this easy access to debt to buy things that are making them poorer. The second reason why you're seeing a bigger divide between the rich and the poor is because of inflation. After the 2008 crash happened, you saw so much money printing happen in 2008 and 2009. And when this money printing happened, that devalues our dollar. And then when the 2020 pandemic and recession hit, you saw even more money printed in 2020 and 2021, which caused even more devaluation of the dollar. Every time you print more money, the value of the dollars that you're working hard to earn and the value of the dollars that you're working hard to save goes down because our dollars kind of run like supply and demand. When you have more dollars in the world, the value of each dollar that you have doesn't have as much buying power. And so as more and more money is printed, the value of each dollar that you hold goes down. So the whole idea behind inflation is that as more money is printed, the value of your dollars go down, which makes the price of everything else, your rent, your groceries, your vacations, your hospital bills go up. I'm gonna jump back into the video in just one second, but before we do, if you are an investor and you're looking for an easy and free way to stay up to date on what's happening in the top financial news from the economy to the housing market, to the stock market, to the crypto market, to the global economy, then you have have to check out Market Briefs. Market Briefs is my free financial news editor that I created that will keep you up to date on what's happening in the financial news. You can read the news editor in less than five minutes every morning. It's a fun and easy to read email and it's completely free. So if you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, I got the link to how you can join down in the description below. People cannot afford their cost of living because housing prices keep going up and your groceries keep going up while wages don't keep up. And so we have a whole generation of people that are really struggling to survive financially because we have the cost of living going up, we have the standard of living going up with wages that are not going up, and we don't have any financial education because none of us go to school learning about how to manage your money. None of us go to school learning about how to invest or how to build our wealth, but if we did, then a lot of people probably would be using their money very differently because if people understood about how money worked, if people understood about how inflation worked, if people understood about how debt worked, then chances are you wouldn't see so many people racking up credit card debt to have the newest shoes, to have the newest clothes, and you'd have more people putting money aside to invest. Because when you invest your money in assets, like a rich people and financially educated people are doing, now your money is growing with or faster than inflation. That way you can become wealthier as inflation happens because the Federal Reserve Bank has made it very clear that they are actively working to increase inflation. As they increase inflation, who pays the price? 
the poor and the middle class. Well, the middle class is getting wiped out, but the poor are the people that pay the price because now your rent goes even higher, your groceries go even higher, your vacation costs go even higher, and your wages may or may not keep up. And so the poor are paying the price because it's kind of like a hidden tax. The cost of everything goes up, but you don't have enough dollars to pay for everything, while the financially educated are benefiting because now if you own the assets, the price of your assets and your investments are going up with or faster than inflation. And so this is where financial education becomes so important because if you understand this, you can use your money as a tool to make you wealthier. If you don't understand this, well, now you are just a pawn in the game that's making everybody else rich. Cheap and easy access to debt with rising inflation is not a good combination for the majority of people because we lack this financial education in our society. It is becoming so important because these things are gonna continue to get worse and every time you see the government come in and print more money, you see more inflation happen. And every time you see this easy access to debt, you're gonna see more people go deeper into debt. And so we're creating this really bad kind of vicious financial cycle where the only people that are gonna be able to break out of the cycle are the people that really understand money. Because if you don't understand how money works, you're gonna continue spinning your wheels and you're gonna continue wondering why is it that you can't get off of this hamster wheel? You just keep spinning your wheels faster and faster and faster, and you're not getting anywhere financially. The only way out of this mess is really financial education because now you can understand how to use your money the right way, you can understand how to invest your money, and you can understand how to grow your money. I sat down to do a podcast yesterday. It was called Habits and Hustle, and the host asked me point blank. She said, how the heck are people supposed to be able to do what you're saying? Invest and save when right now we're living in a time where inflation is so high, people don't even have enough money to buy their eggs. How are they supposed to now live 